The House by the Highway From Jade I wanted to tell you a little bit about the house I grew up in. It was a semi-detached house with my cousin, my aunt, and my grandmother living next door. So we were basically all living in the same house next to a highway. And when I say next to a highway, I mean the highway was basically in our backyard. I lived in that house for more than 20 years. Because I grew up in it, I really loved that house, but I never liked to stay alone in it. I wasn't the only one. My cousin and I talked a lot about it, and we both had the same kind of feeling, like someone was behind us, watching us, when we were alone. We had our bedroom in the basement, and the feeling was particularly strong down there. We both had issues with stuff falling for no particular reason or unexplained strange noises. I was a messy teenager, and my room was a mess. One night I heard the cat walking on my mess to my bed. The door was closed, and I was waiting for her to climb on, but she didn't. I turned on my bedside lamp to find out that she was not there. I went outside my room and found her sleeping on the couch in the next room. I slept on the couch that night too. My cousin told me that she'd had issues with the radio in her room. Sometimes late at night or early in the morning, the radio would turn on by itself. Her mother never believed her, saying she was imagining things, but then it happened to her too. Those things were scary, sure, but it never felt evil or anything like that. The house was brand new when my parents and aunt purchased it, so I always wondered if the highway had something to do with those things we were feeling. Finally, I have two little stories about death and grief. Like I said, we lived in that house for many, many years, and my grandmother was living with us. One day, I came home to find her dead in her favorite rocking chair. I was the first one to find her. In panic and tears, I called 911 and performed CPR on her until the ambulance arrived. Unfortunately, there was nothing I or the paramedics could do to help her. She was gone. The strange thing is that she wasn't that old. She was 72, and she was in great shape. Earlier that day, she was happy in gardening. I barely slept for a month after that. One night, I finally fell asleep from exhaustion, and that night she appeared to me in my dreams. In tears, I begged her to tell me what happened and why she left so soon without any warning. She just looked at me with a big smile on her face. It was like she was saying not to worry and that she was happy where she was. I felt better after that. I told my mother about my dream, and she told me she had had the exact same dream when her grandmother left. A couple of years later, my aunt lost the love of her life. They met late in life and didn't spend enough time together, but they were so happy and so in love. Unfortunately, he lost his life to cancer. My aunt spent all of her time with him in the hospital from the beginning to the end. After that, she went back to her house, and you can imagine her emotional state. She isolated herself. We tried to keep her company, but she just wanted to be alone for quite some time. One night, she was alone on her couch, and out of nowhere... A strong odor of cigarettes filled the room. Now she's not a smoker, but he was. She knew instantly that he was there checking up on her. With a smile on her face, she told him that she was going to be fine and that he could leave for a better world now. The Terrible Roommate from Sierra We started dating in early August. He was living in a house that was separated into three separate apartments. The far left side, the middle, and the right side, where Jay lived. By Halloween time, I had spent plenty of time at his house. Thankfully, he shared my love of Halloween movies, so scary movie nights happened often. One night, while watching a scary movie, something happened in the movie that caused me to jump. Now, this happened all the time. I I scare easily, but love being scared. This particular time, he asked me why the movie scared me, but that doesn't, and then he gestured to the wall that divided his apartment from his neighbors. I asked what he meant, and as I asked, there were some bangs against the wall. Now, I'd heard these same bangs previously, but as I had mentioned, he lived in a triplex. So I asked why his neighbors making noise would bother me. He laughed hysterically and explained that the next-door apartment had been empty since before we had gotten together. 
The bangs then made me nervous, but I tried to ignore them. On a separate occasion, I woke out of a dead sleep after feeling like something grabbed my ankle and jerked my leg. Now, I sleep with my feet out from beneath a blanket, so this terrified me. I woke up Jay in a panic and explained to him what had happened while trying to fight back tears. Bangs were one thing, but something grabbing me was entirely another story. As I explained what had happened, his eyes got wide and his reply was, Holy shit, that happened to you too? Apparently he had felt similar things, but didn't tell me so as not to freak me out. The third and last occasion I'll share happened when we were getting ready to go out one night. The house he lived in was old, so the door to his bedroom didn't shut tightly because the wood was warped. He had to position it just right for it to stay closed since it couldn't latch shut. I sat on the bed while he was in the closet, and the door started swinging open about a foot or so, and then slamming shut. Over and over. We both just stayed still, watching it. Finally, he decided to go investigate and see what was causing it, and propped the door all the way open. There were no vents, no windows open, no fans running. Nothing to cause any form of breeze or draft. My Paranormal Experiences from Aaron. I've had a few experiences that I thought I would share. I grew up in a family that was pretty open to the paranormal, but not seeking things out or inviting them to happen. My parents both had experiences while they were growing up and openly talked about them with us kids. I never expected to see a ghost, but have had a few experiences over the course of my life, and the first was as an adolescent. We were a cat family, having one or more throughout my childhood, and most living very long lives. One night I was walking through my dark house to go to the bathroom. Everyone was asleep and all the lights were out, so I didn't turn any on, so I wouldn't disturb anyone. As I was walking through the dining room, I saw our black cat walking alongside me. I cut through my parents' bedroom to get to the bathroom, and as I passed the end of their bed, there was our black cat soundly sleeping on the end of it. In fact, all the cats we currently had were curled up on my parents' bed sleeping soundly. I realized that the cat walking alongside me wasn't any of our living pets, but likely our sweet, long-time family cat who had passed several months before this experience. Everyone in the family accepted it was our very own ghost cat, and we were totally fine with it. I went to college at a liberal arts school that had its origins as a monastery. The main building on campus was very old, and lots of urban legends abounded about it being haunted by dead monks. The telling of all the rumors and supposed experiences was a favorite pastime, and I had my doubts about some of these supposed hauntings. I took an oil painting class, which was held in the painting studio on the top floor of the old building. To work on assignments, I would end up going to the studio late at night. To gain access, I would call security, who would escort me onto the floor, because all the doors to that floor would be locked after hours. In fact, most of the time I would be working, the entire building would be locked up for the night. Security would unlock access to the art department, let me in, then lock me in, so I could get out, but no one else could come in after me. I would be working, and long after security had left the building, I would hear someone walking out in the hall. The first few times it happened, I would go look to make sure no one was in the hall, but there was no way for anyone to be there. And yet the sound was so distinct, it seemed impossible that there wasn't someone walking there. In order to get my projects done, I eventually just had to ignore the pacing. Nothing more ever happened than footsteps, but most nights I painted, the visitor was pacing in the hall. All I can figure is, maybe they were impatient for me to leave, so they could hang out in the studio. My next experience was a shadow person. I was sharing an apartment with my sister in an old apartment building. We loved the ornate woodwork and charming layout of the apartment. We'd been living there for a while when one evening I was in the living room watching TV. The apartment had a long hall that ran from the front door all the way to my bedroom, which was the master. The dining room and living room had doors off the hallway and also interconnected with a large opening into each other. The living room shared a wall with the master. As I was watching TV, something caught my eye, and I glanced back toward the hallway, just in time to see a shadow man walking down the hall to the master bedroom. He was just a dark shadow, but was tall and wearing a fedora type of hat. 
I was so startled. I just sat there. I never saw him again, but I always felt like there was this restless energy around. I guess my most recent experience actually wasn't mine, but my daughter's. She was a toddler, and I was taking her to the bathroom around 3 a.m. Our hallway on the second floor is small, and looks down the stairway on a large window, positioned between the first and second floors. She stood at the top of the stairs and told me she saw someone outside. So I looked out and saw a skunk rolling around in the grass. As I put her back to bed, I asked her if it was someone walking by that she'd seen. But she said no, it was a little human girl. And I, I was like, what? Where? She told me there was a little human girl in the grass. I told her it was a skunk, not a girl. The next day she told me again that there was a little girl outside, not an animal. She wasn't worried or scared, and I was totally creeped out because she stood there at the top of the stairs for a little bit, looking outside like she was watching someone. Book of the Dead is a Ghost Story Guys production, narrated by Brennan Storr. For access to the entire Book of the Dead archive, ad-free, head to patreon.com slash ghoststoryguys.